we are right off the heels of a college football semifinal loss to Alabama, who would go on to become national champions. Welcome to the offseason episode. We got to say goodbye to a lot of good players in this episode, which is kind of sad. But they won a lot of awards, and I think you can tell one player in particular who's winning a lot of these. It is probably the best defensive player in Riverside history. We know who it is. And that, of course, is the Hall Monitor, Greg Hall. It is the end of an era for him. He was an incredible player. And, of course, Craig Jackson was so good as well. We love Craig Jackson. And I'm disappointed to see a lot of these guys go. I mean, even look at a... Uh, we see defense here. Interception leaders, Tim Washington only had two that led the team. Curse, 16 sacks. Walker had 10. But tackle leaders, Greg Hall had 123 tackles. And that was first. Second place, Craig Jackson, 67. 63 for Brown. Clemens had 58. And then the next highest in all of college football was UNLV's Kilpatrick with 54. So we're getting a lot of tackles, obviously, in relation to the rest of the nation. But the receiving yards aren't crazy. Rushing yards, not crazy. And then passing yards were pretty good, but Daniel got injured. He might have been the Heisman winner, if not for the injury. But the coaching carousel, Luke Fickle at Ohio State. He got fired. And Sonny Dykes also got fired. RIP. I think, you know, we had a shock 2016. We come back down to earth a little bit here. Going 11 and 3 from 15 and 0. But 11 and 3 is still a really, really good season. So I really don't have any uh, complaints about that. I think we were a year ahead of schedule and then going up to the Pac-12, obviously, uh, was a bit of a change. Lost to USC, lost to Notre Dame early, but none of that really seemed to matter because we still made it to the college football playoff. In the end, we just couldn't beat Alabama. Do we have any changes uh, for us? Let's see here, Pac-12, let's go to Riverside. And we have extensions. So, Charlie Fry is coming back, and Todd Granham is coming back as well. As for players leaving, <laughs> John Humphreys we can be proud of. Let's go position by position. No quarterbacks. Reggie Gonzalez is declaring for the NFL draft to be a sixth-round pick. Well, we're going to try and persuade Reggie to come back. This is, you know, arguably our best player. It's not going to happen. So we're going to uh, guarantee a conference championship and Reggie Gonzalez is staying and that will probably raise his draft stock as well. Now, Brian Bradley's trying to transfer as well. I liked him long term, but he's just kind of buried on the depth chart. I'll say he pl will play in uh, more than nine games, but he doesn't care. He's going to leave to go to Oklahoma. Hate Oklahoma. But Reggie is staying. At receiver, John Humphreys is draft eligible and will be a first round pick projected. Michael Ham, not going to get drafted, unfortunately. But of course, he was a legend of the series. Maybe even the better player during his time here. No tight end, no left tackle, left guard, center, or right guard. At right tackle, Aaron Garcia is going to transfer a playing time. I'm going to go to Fresno State. I mean, he's not going to start. So I'm kind of okay with this one. I can't really make a promise to him about any type of playtime. So we will let him go. And Santana Griffin, of course, graduating as well, has been our starting right tackle for a long time. Adrian Chandler is graduating. At left outside linebacker, Josh Watts, the freshman, is transferring to Nevada. I also am not going to be able to persuade him to stay. Malcolm Sullivan, he, I mean, he started technically, but wasn't too great. Greg Hall, not going to be drafted. That's so dumb. And you know what it is? And I can't see my roster here. But it all comes down to his overall, which is influenced completely by awareness. So that's stupid. I should have raised it before this, but I kind of, I forgot about that. Greg Jackson graduating as well. Another really good player for us, despite not having an amazing overall. Alan Hart graduates too. Earl Rice as well. Made some big plays. Terrence Fitch also graduating. And that's it. So, 
Sorry to see some of these guys go. But thankfully, Reggie Gonzalez will not be one of them. Oh, hold on. John Humphreys was a first round pick and Greg Hall did get drafted. Very fun. So Humphreys and Hall both headed to the league and who knows, this might not be the last you see of at least Greg Hall on this channel. Transfer requests. Brigham Bell, the fullback trying to transfer in from UW. He's a 61 overall. I can't really see how good he is. We'll let him in for now, but it's not a guarantee to make the team. And we'll go to the big part of the offseason, which is recruiting. We've stayed in this recruiting battle for Justin Stevens. We're in it for Marcus Shaw, Brent Davis, and Chris Breedlove. How about that? First round pick, John Humphreys, our first drafted player. And he is a first rounder. And that should change our pro potential from like a D plus to a C. First round pick, also a seventh rounder. I still don't get how we have D campus lifestyle when we won the national championship last year. But okay. And we have 15,000 points. We are in the lead on Chris Breedlove. But it's time to prioritize some of these players. Minus 1,400 to USC on Justin Stevens. And if you think I'm putting anything less than 5,000 points on him, you're wrong. And it'll probably end up being a lot more than that. I'm going to put over 8,000 on Justin Stevens for now. He's the biggest guy. Now, it's interesting with Brent Davis. We're apparently still in a battle with Alabama. I don't know why. They're minus 1757 to stay in the battle, and they're minus 6,885. Doesn't make any sense. Brent Davis should have committed to us long ago. I mean, he's a big-time quarterback. I don't know what his play time's going to end up being, but I'll put some points on him, try to get him. And he should be here already. And we don't really have that many guys we're going after. Tom Rowe, I would like to get. Don't really want the Gators to steal him away. We have 15,000 points, man. We can be a little bit frivolous with our spending here. Marcus Shaw, I want to put a few thousand into for sure. It's that New Jersey pipeline. I mean, we got to get him. Even if Trenton might as well be Pennsylvania, we got to get him. With Jim Little, like he's a good D tackle. He's not great. I don't even know if he's going to end up committing. David Arnold, I, I'll be honest, I don't really care about. I don't really care about. He's a little, he's not bad. He's just not all that great. I could put in some points. I don't want to give in too many. Mark Whitehead, I can see a lot of potential in. He's not great, but there's definitely potential here. And then Chris, I need to put in points to him too, but I just don't have enough. Brent Davis, I'm going to do like 200. Mark Whitehead, do I really care about? I, there's potential there. I mean, Kent State could do a lot on him, but I'm, I don't care about David Arnold. I got to eliminate that. Tom Rowe should be committing. Jim Little, I'm going to put in barely any points just because I don't think... I don't know if we're going to get him anyway. And he's not amazing. So I don't really care. Josh Jackson's a junior college player. Really good. Don't get me wrong. Really good player. Probably a quarterback. Can, you know, can play receiver too. But would be a pretty good quarterback. We'd only get him for two years. Probably wouldn't play very much. Especially with some of the other commits we have. I mean, look at this guy. Greg Hunt. He's going to play. If anything. After Adam Daniels gone. So, we'll get him. 1370 on Breedlove. Will be that... I don't know if that's going to be enough to get him. And I'm not taking points off Justin Stevens. I've been in on this guy since... The preseason. It's been a fight to stay in. But we're still in the battle, so I'm putting in points. Maybe I don't need to put as many on Tom Rowe. I'll take a few points off. I want him more than Marcus Shaw, but I think we're nearly guaranteed to get him. I think 1755. Is that going to be enough to get Chris Breedlove? I don't know that it's going to be. I really don't. Jim Little, I'm just taking, I'm taking all but five points off him. I'll put five on all these guys in case we have a chance to steal somehow. They're not really my focus. Over 2,000, I think we'll be fine. And ideally, we get Shaw, Rowe. Ideally, we get Whitehead. Davis is cool. But Stevens and Breedlove would be really, really nice. Stevens in particular. Breedlove, we could kind of do without. I'd like to get him, but it's not a huge miss if we don't. 
Justin Stevens is the big one. If we don't get him, I'll be devastated. Well, this could go pretty bad, but you know what? As long as I get Justin Stevens, I'm gonna be ha I'm gonna be happy. Uh, we started from the beginning of the year on him. Anything else, and I I kind of don't care. But as long as we get Justin Stevens, I'm gonna be golden. And okay, that feels like it's pretty good. We didn't get Mark Whitehead. We got Sean Smith though, who's a JUCO player. He's pretty fast. We didn't get Chris Breedlove, which is kind of wild. Cal, I thought Oregon State was number two. We did get both of the sick receivers. We got Brent Davis. We got Justin Stevens. Signed the number one class overall, I guess. Top class in the conference. We got two five stars here in the end. I think that's a pretty successful offseason. Now, we didn't get Chris Breedlove. Oh, minus 21,000? What? <laughs> How is that even mathematically possible? I have no idea. I guess we never had a chance. Okay. Andrew Smith, don't care about Jeremiah Bradley. Now, Sean Smith is interesting. I didn't put any... I put five points on him, as you guys saw. All right. Mark Whitehead goes to Kent State. 3,400 down. Jim Little to Western Kentucky. We did get Justin Stevens. Minus 2730 was USC. We got Brent Davis. Nobody put in any effort. Well, I mean, I guess we lost big time to North Texas. We got Tom Rowe by a lot. We figured we would. Marcus Shaw, we got by about 2,000. I think that's a pretty good recruiting class here in the offseason. Didn't get Breedlove. Josh Jackson didn't sign anywhere. But that's not bad. Now, position changes could be very, very interesting. We're going to get a big boost for some of these players. Do I move Marion Bates to quarterback? I don't think so. Tim Washington's a senior. Bobby Anderson's a senior now. We're going to be losing both of those guys. And Micah Hodges, who has redshirted this past year, uh, will play a lot. Junior college transfer. We have Kurt Rhodes, who could wear the redshirt this year. Can we see what his wants are? No. I don't want to start him this year, though. I mean, he's, he's our fourth corner, so we won't have to. But Bates, Black, those guys are going to play a lot their senior year. Now, could Bates do better at free safety? That awareness would go down a ton, though, but I could boost that up. There's potential for that. Free safety, Bruce Clemens is going to be a senior. There's Justin Stevens. He's, you know, almost certainly going to wear the red shirt. Still have Joseph Brown. Recruited Bobby Reed. Damn, safety's about to get a lot worse. It was really important that we got Justin Stevens. Really important. I could move Justin Stevens to strong safety, by the way. I've considered that. His coverage isn't amazing or anything. He's got 75 zone. 82 press. Interesting. But where's tackle and hit power and all that? Pursuit's an 80. Blockshed's not terrible at a 57. It's not great. But he's also a freshman. 80 hit power. 85 tackling. I'm going to move him to strong safety. And I have a ton of young strong safety. I'm going to move Brett Johnson to free safety. Now, does that tank the overall? I can do a little, or tank the awareness. I can do a little test, which is um, 45 awareness for Brett Jones. What if I moved him to free safety? I think it goes down, which doesn't really make a ton of sense. It goes down to 40. What about back to strong safety? Does it go back up? It does. So I can change that. Stevens can get a, an awareness boost. I think he's like near 50. It just, to me, people are going to call it cheating. I don't care. If you are going from free safety to strong safety, your responsibilities change. Uh, it, depending on the scheme, can change a lot. But in the game, dude, it's safety to safety. I, I don't care about, you know, a minus eight awareness drop off for no reason. I think that's stupid. We are going to move Brett Jones over to free safety, though. That makes sense to me. Just given our current uh, depth at the position, we're going to lose Clemens next year. We're going to lose Brown next year. And then freshman, freshman, sophomore. Over here, we have junior, freshman, sophomore, freshman. I mean, we could move him back to 86 speed. All right, I'll move him back. It doesn't really matter. Four and four. Four and five. Kind of is what it is. Kicker, we have Antoine Franklin now. We signed Grant Moses. Sorry about that. And we have a couple of athletes. A couple of five stars. Three five stars. Brent Davis is going to be a quarterback. I can't really see him playing any other position. So Brent Davis to QB. Now, Fred Powers is the real interesting one. If you check him out, 
he does have really good coverage right fully aware of that 84 man 88 zone 83 play rec presses 80 75 pursuit he's definitely good however he's got amazing spin and juke i think fred powers will play running back for us he's an 81 overall there He's an 82 overall free safety, 82 or 82 overall free safety, 81 overall corner. I think for our purposes, he is a running back and Kevin Mitchell will play quarterback. Now you're going to see his overall receiver. It's an 80. It's pretty high, but we checked him out and he could play safety, right? But this is a cornerback to me. We'll check out his attributes one more time. He's got 84 play rec, 88 man, 85 zone, 87 press. Hit power is not bad at 70, 78 pursuit. Tackling's only a 60, right? And then his catching's great. 80 catching, 83 spectacular catch. Catching traffic's low at 61, 81 route running, 75 release. He's a good receiver. 96 speed. I know he's 6'5". You want him to play receiver at 6'5", but he's a corner, man, and we're going to move him there. We have so much talent at quarterback. It's ridiculous now. I mean, McGuire is probably not going to make the team. But Greg Hunt, Brent Davis, one of these guys could transfer. Adam Daniel, Ryan Davis will graduate. But we are looking amazing. Fred Powers could play a bit this year. He's got amazing speed. I'm just not sure about him. Don't need to recruit receiver at all now. We have Luke Tucker. We have Barrett Reed. Luke Tucker wore the red shirt. Bennett, Corey Warren. And then with our recruiting class of insane receivers, Tom Rowe, Marcus Shaw, Courtney Davis, big time gems, where Todd Carter is going to struggle to make the team. Joe Foster probably will not make it. Blake Edwards will probably not make it, although he's 6'6 with 94 speed. I don't know. One of these guys might move to running back or something. I mean, I don't know, man. We're in a tough spot, which it's a good problem to have. We have so much talent. TJ Fields maybe is better at tight end. Do I move TJ Fields to tight end? He's a 79 overall receiver, 89 speed, 89 carrying. That's interesting. He's a, a trash tight end is the problem. We just don't have a lot of depth there. I don't remember. Awareness is 64. I'm going to move him to tight end. It's just because we have so much talent at receiver, dude. It's insane. We got to move somebody. And he was the guy who was going to move. And he might go up like close to a 70 overall. You see his awareness drop down a ton. I'm going to boost that back up a little bit. Not a ton, but a little bit. So he might be near 70. So that's not really too bad. We need to recruit tight end in a big way. Not getting breed love was kind of annoying for sure. But it's not the worst thing in the world. Christian Mason is our only right tackle. Who moves? Lauren Smith, plus eight gem at left tackle. We'll move him to the other side. Good backup for right now, and we'll continue to try and develop some of these guys. Marcus Kerr was awesome. We still have James Lee. He's going to graduate. Mike Johnson was redshirted last year. We have no Adrian Chandler, so right end is going to be a little bit thin. We have Willie Hollins. We recruited Nick Hawkins, who I liked a lot. Walter Spicer probably not going to make the team. So one of these guys will move over. It will probably be Mike Johnson. A D tackle. We've got good D tackles. I think I'm probably going to smack the red shirt on John Holt this year. I know he's a senior, but we're going to maximize his potential. Sean Sullivan was a big time recruit for us. He's got to develop a lot because he's going to be starting likely at left outside linebacker. And then middle linebacker is kind of rough. It really is. It's no Greg Hall, Craig Jackson combo at linebacker anymore. This is a rough group. You know, we might even move the freshman Nick Hawkins to outside linebacker. You know, right outside linebacker had a lot of opportunities to uh, to rush the passer. And I think that might be a better fit for Nick Hawkins. He's got 79 speed, which isn't bad. It really isn't bad. He's 6'4", 252. More of a pass rusher, you know, for sure. Let's just see more info like this. 79 finesse boost, 76 block shed. He's got good tackling hit power. Pursuit's not too bad. I think he'll be fine out there. Of course, it'll have to be somebody we develop. 
You know, I think I will move Marion Bates to safety. I just, I don't know. I don't know how much I see him playing. We have Clint Black who p uh, played a lot last year. Bates just would be better at safety for this team. I know we could have done this a while ago, but we were just kind of in a weird spot with what his actual position is. But he's someone who, I don't know. I just don't really see him playing a whole lot at any position. And that's kind of tough. It really is. I feel for him. But that's how we're going to set up this team. Having too much talent is not really a problem. Training results, Reggie Gonzalez is up to a 98 overall. Good move to come back. We're going to check out quarterback first. Adam Daniels up to a 97 as a junior. He got big boosts along the course of the year. But I'm really interested in seeing how his, uh, his throw power and accuracy got upgraded. So awareness plus six. Awareness just got upgraded over the course of the year. That happened for a lot of players. Uh, trucking 82, elusiveness 84. Like most of the running didn't really change a ton. Throw power plus one, throw accuracy plus four. That's decent. And he'll get another one of these at the end of next year. Adam Daniel, he's got multiple years with us. I'm still I'm super excited for that. Ryan Davis got upgraded. Larry McGuire's not going to make the team. Halfback, Reggie, up to 91 speed. His strength, you'd think, is higher than 59. Plays pretty strong. Great acceleration. Agility's pretty good. 97 break tackle, 92 trucking, 94 elusiveness, ball carry vision doesn't matter. 99 stiff arm, but I think he's had that. 96 juke move. And look at Derek Smith out here with 99 juke. You know, Derek Smith has some potential. Still young. Still very young. And then Reggie, did he improve as a catcher too? Receiver out of the backfield? Yes. Triplet got some boosts as well. Nothing like too major. They all kind of get the same stuff going on. Nothing crazy. Triplet, you know, he plays his role. That's all you can say about him. Lee Mayfield, hero of our national championship game. He punched in a one-yard touchdown. Still doesn't really play a whole lot. At receiver, Justin Bennett up to an 86. Luke Tucker up to an 85. He's a redshirt freshman. Luke Tucker has potential. 88 speed isn't amazing, but he has potential. Andy Harris, junior college transfer, wore the red shirt. I think that's going to be good for his long-term development. And Joe Foster, I don't know if he makes team. Let's see some catching upgrades here. It's going to be so crazy. No Michael Hamm. No John Humphreys. They're both, they are all three of these receivers around high 80s for catching. Luke Tucker, man, 92 route running already. 88 jumping is better than most of these receivers. He has some potential. I'm excited about Luke Tucker. I really am. Hayford is up to an 89 overall as a senior. Fields, again, we're going to boost that awareness a bit. Look at these awarenesses, dude. 99 and 96. Like, it, it hides the fact that they're not actually that good. 75 catching for Blake Hayford. I mean, David Turner kind of looks better behind him. He's just slow, which is a big problem, unfortunately. Eric Smith up to an 81. Jamar Cutler getting upgraded. I got to change these likenesses. I mean, you're just full transparency. You're not seeing a lot of white Jamars. I'm just going to be, I'm a level with you. I'm going to be honest. Robert Sanders up to an 81. Anthony Minor up to a 79. He's going to end up playing a ton. And he looks better now. Honestly. Anthony Minor could end up starting this year. He's got better speed, better strength, better agility, better acceleration, better awareness. What about for blocking, though? It's kind of important. Let's see here. Pass block is significantly higher. Run block is significantly lower. Impact blocking is higher. That's going to be an interesting battle. More stamina, too. I don't know about that one just yet. Joe Patton up to an 86. Big time upgrades for the centers. These guys are coming along nicely. Kyle Holloway to an 81. He will probably start over J.D. Lewis. And then at right tackle, Christian Mason up to a 78. Big potential long term for him. As Marcus Kerr goes up to an 86. 84 speed. Show me power and finesse move. 89 finesse move, 84 power, 80 block shed. 91 block shed for Tyler Adams. He just really cannot rush the passer too well right now, which uh, is a bit of an issue. At right end, Willie Hollins, man. Welcome back. Wore the red shirt this past year 
and it's going to pay off big for him because he's an 88 overall now. 77 speed, very good for a defensive end in this game. 87 tackle, he's got 87 or 87 hit power, 80 power moves, 88 block shed. Should be very tough to run on our defensive line. Phil Walker coming back for his senior season. John Holt up to an 86. Terrence Brown up to an 85. He's pretty fast. And what are these power and finesse moves looking like on the D-line? The tackle. Crazy hit power for Phil Walker. 95 power moves, 89 finesse moves, 91 block shed. Phil Walker could get drafted. John Holt, not looking too bad, but not looking great. He's got good tackling. I honestly think Terrence Brown is a better player right now. It is close, but that's why John Holt's going to wear the red shirt. We have Corey Hale. We need big things from him. Linebacker's kind of a tough spot for us at the moment. We lost a lot of talent. He's got good power and finesse moves, hit power. Corey Hale wore the red shirt last year. Speed isn't amazing. And I believe tackling. Yeah, tackling's not amazing either. And as you see, 70 tackling could be a really big problem for us. Power move and finesse move and block shed are all quite good. He's a weird player. Eric Cole's got a plus six. Kyle Smith only got a plus four. Kyle Smith is supposed to be it for us, man. So that's a little bit annoying. 83 tackle hit power is not great. Block shed is not bad. Tommy Wilson, 87 block shed. Okay. Play Rex low. Or, where, or that's man coverage. Man, eh, I don't know. Coverages are not great. Red outside linebacker. Bubba Johnson is probably going to start because he's much, much faster. But I imagine he'll be a better tackler as well. Or not Bubba Johnson. Uh, Bernard will be a better tackler. He's not, actually. I don't know. Why is he so much higher? 83 block shed. And then play rec is much higher. I think Bubba Johnson will start younger. Want to get him on the field too. Corner, Tim Washington up to a 91. Bobby Anderson up to 97 speed. 88. Micah Hodges, 86. Clint Black, 84. Nick Ford, 80. Tim Washington does look amazing though. 99 man, 96 zone, 96 press. It's not bad for Bobby Anderson either. Press is not great. Might play him in the nickel. 92 man, 95 zone, 80 press. Micah Hodges could be the CB2. 92 man, 92 zone, 91 press. That's pretty good. Clint Black also looks way more like a safety. I did not see that. A like, pursuit's not crazy. Block shed is pretty good. Tackling's not amazing. Hit power is okay. But I mean, we have so much depth at safety that isn't really a concern of mine. And then Nick Ford also has really awful press, but coverage is good. But he's not going to have to play right away. And he could wear the red shirt as well. Bruce Clemens up to a 94 overall. Could be drafted. Darren Watkins. There's Marion Bates. Gets a little bit of a speed boost. Bruce Clemens is going to look really, really good, I imagine. 80 tackling, 80 hit power. 70 block shed, 89 pursuit, 91 zone. Look at Darren Watkins, though. Former corner is why his coverage is so good, but the press is horrible. Marion Bates looks pretty good. 90 man, 92 zone. I, I don't know. We'll find a way to get some of these guys on the field. Marion Bates, I think, will play eventually. But I don't know if he plays over Darren Watkins at any point. So it could be Darren Watkins takes over next year. And then when he leaves, Marion Bates plays, starts for one season at free safety. That, that's a real possibility. And then Joseph Brown is a senior up to an 89 overall. I love Joseph Brown. 94 speed. His coverage isn't amazing, but he's just a, a solid tackler. 85 tackle. 88 zone now. Looking good. At kicker, sign a new guy. Justin Lynch will not make the team. And that is all of the training results. And it's time to cut players. And we're probably going to have quite a few. 82. We got to get 12 guys off the roster. Larry McGuire. I'm sorry. You're not making the team. And Ryan Davis honestly could be cut as well. But we're going to leave him. But we got to cut Larry McGuire. Sorry, Larry. We are so good at running back. I don't really want to cut any of these guys, but if one had to go, it probably would be Derek Smith. Got great break tackle. 
We remember he has 99 juke, but is he better than Fred Powers, really? I don't know. Not by a lot. Sean Smith could get cut. Junior college player. Drew Thompson's here, too. I like Drew Thompson. Don't love him. He really isn't that good, actually. Why is he a 76? Look at his attributes here. Carrion, 71. He can't catch out of the backfield either at all. 85 juke is fine. 79 spin. 60 sif arm. 78 ball carry vision. 84 elusiveness is nice. Trucking's real low. Break tackle's 83. That's pretty good. 79 acceleration. Oh, that's low. I know we just got him to commit. Drew Thompson might not make the team. I can't cut Lee Mayfield because he's a legend. But Brigham Bell is not going to stay on the team. There's just no way. We obviously have way too many receivers at this point. Way too many. But we, what are we going to do? Not recruit some of these studs down here? I can't cut Todd Carter. I know it's going to be Blake Edwards, but 6'6 with 94 speed. I'm going to try and develop him. I do not want to cut Blake Edwards. Todd Carter... Ty Carter's good. He's, he's really solid. I would prefer not to cut Todd Carter. But it's a possibility. TJ Fields wouldn't be bad if I boosted his awareness a bit. So I want to potentially boost his awareness. He's from Hawaii. That's neat. He's very fast. His blocking is not terrible. And we don't have a lot of tight end depth. Pat Armstrong is on cut watch for sure. Jared James. He's not terrible. He'd be like a 78, 79 overall junior. Is there anything particularly redeeming about him? He's very slow. He looks more suited to play D tackle. He looks good. Tackling's low. I'd like to hold on to him for now. Walter Spicer will not make the team brandon powell could be cut i want to keep ronald harris for the arizona pipeline that i'm somewhat building up andy anderson has a fun name i just recruited him and he's basically the same overall as ronald harris despite being a year younger and having worse awareness significantly so i think he's a better on-field player tackling is way better power move good ronald harris could be cut we'll circle back but no we won't he's probably gonna get cut where do i cut brandon powell gonna cut the punter for sure justin lynch we gotta cut eight more guys though it might end up being an extra receiver uh, we're in a tough spot you know what it's actually gonna be i hate to do this but sean smith and drew thompson both have to go at wide receiver i'm gonna cut joe foster just don't see him getting on the field, Redshirt Jr. I don't want to cut Blake Edwards, man. I know it's like, why are you holding on to this 69 overall? But the potential is there. 6'6", 94 speed. He's got pretty good agility for his size. Break tackle's not bad. He's not going to fumble. Catching is terrible. But spectacular catch is an 86. That is the highest of any player on this team, except for Justin Bennett. Catching traffic is 76. That's better than... Most of the guys ahead of him, with the exception of Tom Rowe and then, you know, the top guys that are going to play. Route running is an 83. That's pretty good. Corey Warren only has 78 route running, by the way. He was a uh, running back to start off. If you guys don't remember. Jumping 83, pretty good. I can't cut Blake Edwards. I would sooner cut Todd Carter, who is a gem, and I'd feel nothing. I, I feel maybe <laughs> slightly regretful, but I can't do that. I know, like, tight end's a weird spot, too, with TJ Fields. This is a tough decision, actually. It really is. Like, if I redshirt John Holt, Terrence Brown and Phil Walker be my main 2D tackles, and then a third one kind of comes in sometimes. It was Brandon Powell this year. And I, I, I don't think I can cut him. I'm going to not care about Arizona and cut whoever I just cut. I kind of forgot his name. Joe... Uh, he had a name, maybe. Hey, hey, maybe he had a name. I think that's fair to say. Can't cut Clarence Brown. The whole reason I signed him was because he was fast. I don't have the depth to worry about that. Can't cut any of these middle linebackers. 
Right outside linebacker. I moved Nick Hawkins out here. He was not a bust. He was fine. But he's, you know, learning that position. Can't cut him. Need four guys to go. Don't want to cut Nick Ford. I really don't. I liked him. One of these safeties could go, though. Will it be Alex Jones from InfoWars? I think it probably will end up being him. His tackling is abysmal. 60 tackle? And you want to play on my team? Coverage is pretty good. He seems more of a corner. He's going to get cut. Brett Jones going to get cut as well. Just isn't athletic or good enough to make the team. We have better younger players ahead of him. And now it comes down to two. Sophomore left end Jared James. Do you have what it takes? What are you good? Hey, he's pretty good across the board. I said he was going to be maybe defensive tackle. I can see that. I'm going to cut Todd Carter as well. I think we all know he's just never going to play. And looking at his ability, he's not all that good. Now, Courtney Davis is really not much better. Davis has lower catch and traffic, lower spectacular catch, slightly higher catching, slightly worse route running. He's 5'11". What is he good at? Why would I want Courtney Davis? Why is he a plus seven gem? And he's slower. Hold on a second. Why is he better? Davis has, is it really just a wear? It's only plus three. Davis has worse speed, slightly better strength, slightly better agility, better awareness, slightly better, or, or better acceleration, slightly better awareness, worse brake tackle, same trucking, better elusiveness by a lot. That could be it. I, ideally, I just wouldn't cut any of these guys. But we have so much depth at receiver. I know it probably seems insane to keep all these guys. But, it, dude, it's a 77 overall true freshman. I don't, I don't want to. Pat Armstrong simply will never play. Yeah, he's got to get cut. Believe me when I say I am searching for this final cut. It might be Marcus Miller. Just because I don't know when he would play. Bobby Reed is kind of bad. He can't cover at all. Is he much? He's got 73 block shed though. 77 for City, 6'6. Six, six. Marcus Miller from Carteret. <sighs> I'm sorry, Marcus. You are the final cut. Gotta have 18 receivers so I can run read option. Custom conferences. I don't think I would change anything here. Maybe add another team to the Pac-12 North in order to kind of balance out the uh, divisions a little bit more. So we have the extra team from Riverside. Who would be likely to join the Pac-12? I'm looking in the Mountain West. Boise State, maybe? Does BYU have a home? BYU to the Pac-12. I know they're joining the Big 12 in real life. I'm going to change things around. Like Texas and Oklahoma now to the SEC. I'm going to make that change. I could move BYU to the Big 12 like they're doing in real life. Maybe I'll do that instead and add Boise State. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We are going to add our rival, San Diego State. Now I will fix the rest of the conferences. So Texas will be out. In is BYU, UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston. So I've done the best that I can. I think this is all correct. I've realigned the ACC. The divisions could be, I could be one off for one of these. Um, the American should be correct. The Big 12 is the last one I have to do, which is Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC. And that should be it. I, I would assume they're going to join the West, but I don't know if there's going to be like a division realignment. So that one is a little bit up in the air. So there becomes a bit of an issue as there are only 14 slots, yet the SEC would have 16 teams. And in order to get the proper, what will probably be the new division alignment, it's going to be Alabama, and it has to be Auburn in the East. So I need to take two schools out. So Vanderbilt is an obvious choice to move out. Sorry, Vandy fans. It's kind of true in game. Tennessee taken out of the SEC would be super funny all right so i've made my decision and here's what's gonna happen because auburn has to move over vanderbilt is the obvious team to move out 
but it's kind of like where do i put them i'm going to move vanderbilt to the american pretty big conference now we we have a we have an interesting bunch of teams in here this should have helped limit at least for the next couple seasons how good like a two lane would be or a tulsa or somebody that would just randomly or smu even randomly go undefeated and make the national championship something like that so adding in some better teams will do it vanderbilt has the worst record in sec history since 2010 they have the worst record and they had the worst record in the sec this year now the other team comes a little bit tougher but who i have ultimately decided on based on um based on conference history and i fixed the sec as well so we have i gotta swap mizzou and vanderbilt all right how do i do that i'll move them into the uh the american real quick vanderbilt will go back to the east i had to make some changes to get this to work but um i got everything the way i wanted so mizzou pack or not packed well sec west so basically auburn and alabama over to the sec east and texas and oklahoma to the sec west kind of sucks that this alabama lsu rivalry will be a little bit different it might be like protected you they can still play every year but auburn and alabama obviously had to uh, both move over geographically it had to make sense and the last thing i believe i'll show you is the players that will get the red shirt i'll set up the recruiting board off camera so i have some time to really just dive into it and uh that'll be seen in episode one so gotta decide which players to redshirt it's gonna be brent davis don't want to worry about greg hunt transferring because he's really really good so i want to make sure he stays so he's not gonna wear the red shirt he'll just be the third stringer which is good in case we deal with injury again fred powers i think i'll leave as well we can always redshirt him next year because next year reggie will be gone phil triplett and Derek smith can be the one too but I don't know it'll be kind of weird i'd like to redshirt him now i just don't want to risk a player of his caliber transferring at receiver is he wearing it automatically it's a good idea i mean i'm i want to do that todd carter courtney davis will all wear the red shirt as well tom rowe and marcus shaw i don't know we'll see what happens with those guys but they will be on the active roster good players too so I don't think it's out of the question that either of these two will receive playing time this season, especially Tom Rowe, who I would say is at least better than Andy Harris, despite being a little bit slower, and is I don't know, in that kind of same range as Corey Warren, who just isn't, you know, the route runner. DJ Fields will get it. Oh, I've already redshirted him, that's right. All right, so I guess I can't, obviously. Minor might start, so I can't redshirt him. Entire offensive line has already worn it. Lawrence Smith, I'll whack a redshirt on him. We can pretty much redshirt whoever we want on this offense or defensive line. Uh, Tyler Adams, Jared James, why not? We really only need two. A D tackle, I said for a while that John Holt is going to wear it. Clarence Brown will wear it. He's really just faster than anything right now. Robert Davis will wear it. Nick Hawkins will wear it. I'll probably slap it on Nick Ford as well. I kind of want Kevin Mitchell to play right away. So we're going to do that. Kevin Mitchell also might change skin tones <laughs> because he's playing corner. That's just, you know, what happens. Brett Johnson can get it. And I'm not going to redshirt Justin Stevens. I do not want to risk a transfer. I'll put it on Bobby Reed. Ooh, this was the generated schedule and i kind of like it number one alabama that should be home this time because we had it at alabama last season number six cal of course it's got to stay like that number nine miami is an interesting one that'll be a home game for us which i'm okay with and versus western michigan i'm kind of fine with this i think we're gonna leave it as is we have a couple big tests miami alabama and uh, Arkansas is our week 13. I could change this though. I'm gonna open this up and maybe add in a game week 14. We gotta play San Diego State. So we gotta 
We got to take one of these teams out of here. We got to get San Diego State back on the schedule. Are they busy every week? Here's what we're going to do. We are going to add Minnesota. San Diego State is, is full booked. We're going to have Virginia Tech, which is a rivalry game for us, as you guys know. Alabama, we are hosting them. That much has not changed. And then it's going to be UCF at the bounce house in week 14. I think that could be quite fun. So this will be the schedule. Week one by Minnesota hosting them. They were in the college football playoff national championship last year. Virginia Tech versus hosting them this time. Hosting Cal. Hosting USC. We better beat them this year. Hosting Alabama. And then we have a lot of road games coming up. Oregon. UCLA. Hosting Arizona. At Arizona State. Hosting Colorado. At Utah. Open. And then at UCF. We make this a home game. Yeah, we're going to do that. That could be really big for recruiting. So I'm going to do that. And that'll do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you for week one. We're going to start off with recruiting and then go into uh, the game in week two. So that should be a lot of fun. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.